Okay, now we are in. We're recording. Okay, <laughs> hello, fellow travelers. I'm really excited to introduce to you some very fascinating and inspirational people, Kali and Lee Lynch. Okay, so um, this is going to be my first interview, so bear with me. I hope everything comes out perfect and that when I edit and post, you can all see this. All right, let me go ahead and welcome Kali and Lynch all the way from New Zealand. Yeah, currently yeah. currently in Australia. Currently Kiwi. in Australia, there you go. You get Kiwi's me. Kiwi's going home in about two weeks. Excellent. Okay, so um, Kali and Lee are health advocates and both are fitness instructors and personal trainers, and I will go ahead and share a little bio. So Kali, started her commitment to health and wellness back in 2004 when she felt that she needed to make a shift in her life because she was not healthy and not really happy. She earned a national New Zealand title for a bikini fitness contest where she later met her, her now husband, Lee. Holly currently teaches and practices mindset work and incorporates this with personal growth helping others in her community to thrive and live well. And Lee is also a mindset trainer, life coach, and flight instructor. Lee has been involved in sports his entire life, primarily in bodybuilding, and became one of the top ranked natural bodybuilders in New Zealand. From all the discipline and training, Lee learned some very important leadership skills necessary that has given him the opportunity to accomplish many things in life regardless of challenges and adversaries. So, one quote that I like that Lee went ahead and sent to me, knowing the way to achieve health and life balance involves more than just eating well, training, and trying to be good. All right, folks. Uh, now, Lee and Kali created the Your Mind and Body Project through this project and personal coaching. They are changing people's views on what health is and just how easy life can become when we use our minds correctly. So let's begin. Jump in, please. How do you define using your mind correctly? How do we define using our mind correctly? Well, it's, it's first and foremost, actually, do you want to kick off on that one? I know you love this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, mindset, it's more than... It's more than just how you think. It's, it's three things. It's how you think, it's how you feel, and it's taking action on it. And what we've discovered is that mindset has been this missing link to being healthy and well. You know, we have all the diet information, nutrition information, fitness information now than we've ever had before. But so many people are still really unhealthy. And it really is all about a mindset shift. So if people can shift their mindset to being being healthy and well then it becomes easy their identity matches being healthy and well and then because of that they'll naturally gravitate towards the good nutrition um, moving the body and it's all about feeling too and how you feel so people will feel happy joy and just at peace with themselves so the mindset for me has been an absolute game changer and yeah it's um very passionate about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we are too here at JTAL. Lee, do you want to add anything? Because yeah. she certainly uh, summed it up there. <laughs> yeah, Kel, Kel loves it. That's why um, I, go, I think for me, you know, I think the mindset side of things, everyone is always sort of really focused on the nutrition and the training side of things, which is a, it's, it's only part of the big picture. If you imagine like a dartboard, for example, and the center around the bullseye, that's that's really the... The, the training portion of of the whole scenario being the smallest part of the whole health aspect and then if you sort of went out to where where the triple line was or where the double line was that's that's your nutrition part so you're sort of looking at the 20 percent of your training the 80 percent nutrition but all of that doesn't work well unless your mind yeah. is pushing you in the right direction unless you're identifying with what it is that you're doing and your goals are solid around that and if you you take the whole dartboard into account uh, and contain all those other elements. That is effectively what the mindset around it is. And I mean, we see it, we know it from professional athletes and high level sportsmen. It's not right. that 
the training and nutrition that separates them from everyone else. It's it's the mindset around it and the fact that they work on that. That's um, that's key to it, and that's it, it is the missing part for those of us in the world that aren't um, elite or high level um, sportsmen. It's that's it's the easiest part to actually work on and achieve as po- as opposed yeah. to the other bits and pieces. Mindset is really connected to the motivation as well. And it's very difficult to motivate other people. You know, um, in fact, we can't a lot of times. We can probably inspire them and influence them. But ultimately, you know, it is really a decision that we have to make. And, um, you know, studying a lot, I don't know if you're familiar with Prochaska and Di Clemente's work on the readiness for change. But okay, so it's just a very interesting way to view it. You know, they did years and years of studies and, you know, how to help people, especially with substance abuse, for example, or smoking, and they couldn't get them quite. But it's really an interesting thing. And there's this sort of pre contemplation where the individual um, really doesn't make that shift or that mindset shift you know they try to do it for other you know family members or because someone is trying to lure them into telling them that they're going to die of cancer if they continue smoking or something like this right and so it is very interesting this motivation um you know behind that and it's funny you you talk about that as well about the um you know they're doing it for other people and it's one of the things we actually work on massively in your mind and body project is you, you need to do this for yourself first and foremost. It's not selfish to do something for yourself. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's quite selfless to do it because mm-hmm. when you get in touch with your heart and we do a lot of heart brain harmony stuff as well. And when you get in touch with your heart and your feelings and your emotions about what it is that you're achieving and why it is that you're achieving it, it's actually very easy to step into the identity, the role that you want to step into and achieve those goals. So yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And the readiness for change is, is absolutely huge, being able to change and just switch that. Thing exactly. Me. And isn't it interesting that, like you were saying, Kali, we are so inundated with all this information, scientific um, energy work, because we do that as well at Journey to Authentic Living. And we have all this availability, and yet still people are having a very difficult time with it all. And um, there's a lot of pressure in the world, and we than we've had before, you know, technology is a good source. It's beautiful because we wouldn't be able to do this interview today, but at the same time, it's really trying to keep that balance. Um, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is. um, And we see this a lot, you know, with people, they, they have all the information, but they don't know what to do with it or, and it really comes back to, like I just mentioned before, identity of that person if their identity doesn't match the information that they're looking at, mm-hmm. then they'll only get so far. So they'll reach a goal, but then they'll regress and go backwards. Mm-hmm. And that's why we, you know, you see this yo-yo effect with dieting and with exercise, people reach the goal. And then months later, they're back to square one. And it's like, what has happened with this person? And what it really comes down to is identity. They don't identify with being healthy and well or healthy well and happy so it's about that identity shift and going even deeper and discovering first of all why do they want to make that change because people don't really understand why they just look at themselves in the mirror and think well this is a physical thing i want to that's look right. good <laughs> that's right someone's coming up so it's all about looks because that's what we're bombarded with on right. instagram and facebook yeah. um but it actually goes deeper than that and it certainly does cover their true why the reason why they're doing something so yeah and it really is a journey yeah i mean it really is a journey and we are bombarded with a lot of self-image especially women are you know without trying to sound you know strange or whatever right now but it really is i mean there's a lot of pressure i never noticed it you know i'm i'm i'll be 49 and when i was growing up here in the united states especially in california i mean you just i never really noticed it it wasn't i mean i always tried to keep fit and stay healthy and things like that but and um, women really they're they're exploited quite a bit to be quite frank and so you know if you're a bigger person for example it's difficult to sort of compare 
although here in the United States, there's something that I think is quite dangerous. I'll just be very honest about it. And something that I personally don't like, it's not okay to be obese. And they're sort of making it okay to be obese. That's, what that's, what do you all think? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm huge on this. this. <laughs> and I mean, it's okay to look how you want to look. That's right. But if if the person's not healthy, I mean, no, health is number one. If you don't have your health, then everything else doesn't matter because you know your longevity is not going to be very long. So, mm. yeah, I mean, we. And this, you start with health, and if yeah. how you look is affecting your health, then you need to start with the health. It's not necessarily a physical. That's right. Thing, but I mean, it is. It, it's a touchy subject for some people. It as is well. very touchy. It um, is, but we need to talk about it. And yeah. you know, just to let you know, Journey to Authentic Living is all about really being authentic and really trying to put it out there. It's going to be uncomfortable. Maybe some people that watch this might uh, feel some triggers. But we do need to talk about it because, and I agree with you, Kali, it is about being healthy. You can be a bigger boned person. I mean, we all have shapes and sizes and all that, right? I mean, our genetics and so forth. But it's really about being healthy first. Um, however, I'm seeing that contradiction. It's like it's okay to, especially with reality television, and, you know, so I don't know, we're sort of going to the extreme and we're not really attending to the root cause as you were talking about the whys, yeah. you know, and, um, and also our food is really tampered with, you know, um, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've read a great book. I forgot the name of the doctor who wrote the wheat belly. <clears throat> I've read the wheat belly. No. Yeah, and he oh, talks a lot. <laughs> yeah, he talks a lot about, you know, how breads, you know, simple carbohydrates and so forth are not. And um, you just, that's why, I don't know how it is in Australia, New Zealand area, but over here you see a lot of, a lot of muffin top, a lot of belly yeah. that you never saw even in the 80s, um, not even early 90s. And you see that, and even sometimes I've suffered from it because of the, um, even though I'm thin and smaller framed, it's like, oh my goodness, you know? Because it's, it's sometimes if you do happen to eat more breads or pastas, they're tampered with and they're hybrid according to this doctor and there's science behind it. And so anyway, without getting into that, look that up. I'd love to know. Yeah, yeah, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, what, what your thoughts are. I love books like that. The irony of this part of the conversation is too, the top three obese countries in the world are America, Australia, and New Zealand. Really? I didn't know Australia, New Zealand. In that, in that order, in fact, I think New Zealand has <laughs> overtaken and gone to second. Yeah. I so, can't believe it with all the nature and it's like you guys are always, at least in our point of view, you're out there getting out. And even for Australia, uh, I believe the latest stats that I read, and this is probably about six or eight months ago now, mm -hmm. the latest stats where Australia actually has the highest population of gym goers in the world per capita as well, but they're, they're either the second or the third most obese country in the world. So it's yeah. a very, we see very, it's quite, like, it's quite a defined line in Australia. You're either very fit and healthy looking or you're overweight obese. It, there's no sort of semi really middle ground. Yeah. 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 So what would you, what, what would, what is that? What's what's going on over there, according to your theory? You you kind of you kind of touched on it, where um, people are sort of thinking it's okay um, to, and they they justify in their actions, and we yes. do see it a lot yeah. when we train people when they first come in that they they they, they justify their actions around um, their weight issues or the way they eat or the way they they conduct themselves and the fact yeah. that they either have reached their goals and then drop back or they're not reaching their goals that there's always an excuse I, and I, I I'm a strong believer in that it's actually it's a society thing these days and we're to it's almost like the spoiled child we're kind of told it's okay to not achieve our best or be the best version of ourselves and mm -hmm. if we aren't the best version of ourselves, that's all right, here's a pill to fix it. Um, yeah. As opposed to you can fix this yourself, you can do this naturally, you don't need a magic cure, the magic cure is you, everything lays with inside you, you just have to activate it and be the cure for yourself, be, be the prevention more than anything. And that's, I mean, 
I, I kind of like this. I could go off on a tangent massively. You know, do, <laughs> no, no, I... that's okay because I embrace what you're saying. So I'm so happy that I could feel your energy <laughs> before this interview. And I was got, got to get this going because I um, really feel this in my heart as well. And this is also with some of the behavioral coaching that, that we do as well. It, um, it, it really is about, about what you're talking about. So I appreciate you saying that because I don't feel so alone about it and it's not okay. And, um, we do, you know, there's a difference because people will probably think, well, they're talking about competition and, and there is a negative side to competition, but, um, and you would know this uh, in, the, in the arena of, of competing yourselves, right? Physically and things like that. Um, it, it can really be, I don't want to use the word damaging, but, um, but I do like your train of thought where you're going uh, with the fact that um, we, we can be the best we can for ourselves. You know, it's not trying to um, necessarily beat another person. At least that's my, that's the way we think about it. It's not beating other people. Um, some healthy competition is good. And that might be controversial for some people like, uh, you know, um, but, but I think overall you're correct. We're seeing it here without going off on a tangent. We're seeing it here also in the public school systems in the United States where a lot of children are just being passed or teachers can't use red marks anymore because it traumatizes the children. So we're creating, we're creating, yeah, really, it's not a joke. I mean, this is a reality and, um, you know, it's, we can say so much about that, but it does tie into the justifications as you were talking about and so forth um, with health. So what you guys are doing, please continue doing it because um, definitely, yeah, and, and it's not a pill, right, Kali? It's not just, I see it all the time. Well, I don't feel good. So, you know, people don't want to even go through grief. You know, grief is part of life. Loss, you know, is part of life. And so we just pop that pill. Now, Having said that, for those of you that are watching, I'm not negating and I'm not um, in, in saying anything bad about um, mental illness. We honor the fact that there are people who have illnesses and that are not well. We're not, I'm not, we're not talking about that. Those are exceptions. We're just talking about popping a pill for everything, right? We need to, we're, we're built right? What do you think about this? I think that we're built as human beings and our DNA to go through a certain amount of suffering. It builds character, but not just for the sake of building character in the egoic sense, but th I think we're built for it. What do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, without experiencing some bad in your life, then you can't experience good, if that makes sense. To understand what good is or to understand an amazing experience, you need to have experienced the opposite, otherwise there is nothing. <laughs> so that that is absolutely true. And we we can control that. You know, we can look at, for example, when something bad happens, you can look at that and well, what did I learn from it? And what are the positives that I can take from it? Mm -hmm. And it's all about flipping your perception. The more you do that, the more good experiences you'll have, but also you'll deal with stress a lot better, which means you won't need the pills and you can control yourself in a way. So it does start with you. It starts with looking inwards and yeah. yeah. And physiologically too, I mean, I'm not a doctor or anything, but <laughs> we, we, we design, like we've got these chemicals, we've got um, cortisol, dopamine, uh, serotonin, they're, they're bred into us, like that they are in our structure and they, they, traditionally it's those being out of balance that cause a lot of the mental illnesses, but you need those in balance. You need to experience these feelings and emotions because they trigger certain things. They trigger the release of these hormones in a certain way. And you can even flip that completely and go, the foods we're having today are triggering these hormones in, a, in an Absolutely. incorrect way. And because yeah. they're triggering these hormones in an incorrect way, we are a bit, put the, the, the obesity mm. epidemic aside, it is yeah. causing other epidemics along the way because we're getting flushed with, sugar is a great example, we get flushed <laughs> constantly oh, yes. with dopamine. We're like, we're, yeah. we're like drug addicts. We addicts. are, we're sugar, <laughs> we're sugar addicts and we're getting flushed with like 2,000% more dopamine than we need on a daily basis just yeah. because our, because our dietary sugar is through the roof. So it, it really is. It, it, it's all a balance and you, you need those feelings and emotions. But, 
going back to the core of it, you need it to be to be you, to, to be, be to be the best well, version well, of yourself. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think it's really important, to, again, to be able to really talk about it and have candid conversations. We try to conceal some of these things or not even your, your parents, for example. And, you know, a lot of times parents, of course, you're going to be in pain. You do not want your child to go through suffering, but, you know, they have their journey too, and they have their lessons to learn. And we just, we can't hide it because if not, then we're actually doing them a disservice, right? I mean, they have to have the mental stamina as well to overcome. Yeah. So, wow, what a great conversation. It's, it's, like a, it's like with a toddler. I was just thinking the same you, thing. You pick what? a toddler up when they hurt themselves and you pick them up and you pat them and you're like, it's all right, you'll be there. But then you're anchoring in that pain and that thought and that feeling to them. It's just, it's just like, just, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm probably bigger on it than Kelly is. It's just like... Bring them up. <laughs> just go straight yeah. to them and pick them up when oh. they cry fall over and yeah. but it's all part of the learning they're learning they're hurting themselves this you know smacking their head on the floor and falling over right. and um but they're learning they're learning That's what right. pain is they're learning what emotions are like when i leave the house and a daughter cries that's her emotions and mm. without that she won't understand the good emotions so that's absolutely it, true awareness it really is all about awareness it becoming. totally is about awareness totally well i love that we need these conversations and we need these conversations because when people become aware of something then they can change it and it's it is it's all about awareness because you know we, we we don't need to talk about it more often yeah yeah, I think we do. And I think just having this dialogue with each other is, is a good place to start as well. And I don't know if you're familiar, but we also do some mindfulness training. And you as well probably incorporate all that and designed your own program, which is fabulous and really bringing that out. But I, what really impresses me about the two of you and what I've read through the um, through Lee's posts, uh, you know, with the Instagram and then obviously looking at your website is it's, there's a balance between trying to, you know, you know, you can't handle the truth hardcore to not, not self entitling and, and negatively enabling people. There has to be a balance between those two. And so I really like that you are talking about this as well, which, which is fantastic. Um, so let me ask you this, who or what um, has inspired you to become health advocates? That's a good We've got quite different stories. Very different. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah, Yours is more powerful than mine. Me, I yeah. fell into it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I mean, my journey started back in 2004, um, as I alluded to in my, my bio, um, at that time, my life wasn't going very well. Um, I wasn't happy. I was actually dealing with grief as well after my sister passed away four years earlier. Um, so my life was spiraling and I wasn't healthy. I wasn't feeling good. Um, and what actually got me started was I ended up going to aerobics classes, but they weren't actually classes. It was to become a fitness instructor. So I decided to pursue it and keep going, which was getting out of my comfort zone. But what, when I look back on it, what actually happened was health and wellness literally changed my life overnight. Like I can actually say literally overnight, my life changed as a result of getting into the health and fitness industry. And the healthier I became, um, my eating changed, um, my outlook on life changed, my friends changed. Um, things just got so much better. And it was because I started with looking after myself. And when I did that, it changed everything. And then later down the track, the mindset came into it and that changed things again to again. another level. Yeah. So for me, it's such a personal story because I've had the before and now I've got the after and I can show people exactly what those steps are. So yeah, being fit, healthy and well is so powerful because how you feel creates your reality. So yeah, it's huge. It's been a yeah. huge journey for me. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said Kelly's is more powerful. I, I literally, <laughs> my, my parents were quite healthy and because I played sport, even at a high level when I was younger, I, um, I lived in Australia for a portion of my life and played baseball at a high level. So I was in, in the Institute of Sports from the age of about 11, 12. So my, my fitness journey sort of started very young and it just morphed basically into 
um, you know, when I left school, I, I couldn't play rugby anymore. Obviously, rugby is a huge New Zealand sport. Um, couldn't take the, because I'm an airline pilot um, by trade, if you like, um, I couldn't take a knock, knock to the head. I'd lose my medical. So it just morphed for me. It's just something that's always been in my life and something that I've been like huge, um, hugely inspired about. And it's, it, it, it's such a massive part of my life. That's that's really my inspiration. It's just the way I was brought up. So wow, that's wonderful. That's great. I mean, you both have great stories coming from two different angles and be able to complement each other as well, which I think is fantastic. So there isn't anyone really in particular today that you find an inspiration. I mean, it could be a celebrity or anybody. It doesn't matter. But is there someone that um, you really are inspired by today? It's a good question. I don't. Yeah. I don't really get inspired by like a particular person. I've got like a massive group of people that are very different in the fitness industry in different ways. I've friends who are doing amazing things as bodybuilders, things that do amazing friends as powerlifters, CrossFit type friends. Yeah. Like, I think, and I think that's quite important. If you, it's it's good to focus on someone if you're trying to shift your identity towards something. I say, mm. I'm mm -hmm. like that as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you if you're doing that i think but when you when you believe in your health you, you tend to take inspiration from the fact that people in large volumes around you are changing like the actual the actual motion of the change in large groups of people is quite, is a lot more inspiring to me than it is just a single individual person wow that's really interesting i've never heard it quite that way you know usually when you ask somebody they they say, well, it's, you know, I don't know, some Arnold Schwarzenegger or something, you know, or I'm making it up, of course. But that's really interesting. That that really says a lot about where your heart is, right, with the community and just watching different people and sort of with different experiences. So there isn't really one person that you identify with, it sounds like, um, which is really beautiful. Really similar as well. I think, yeah, for me, I look at individuals and collectively, I, I, that's where I draw my inspiration from, from people that maybe that I've coached with or mentored with or a lot, a lot of mindset coaches really inspire me. Nice. Um, but there's no one particular person. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what really actually inspires me is seeing people get results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it inspires you to go and do more. So... But like Lee said, with um, if someone is looking to find someone to be inspired by, it's the identity thing. So if someone yeah. doesn't identify with being healthy and well, find someone who you can model yourself on. Mm. Not copy, but model yourself on, like their actions. What do they do? Um, and how do, what's their outlook on life? Model that. And that's how you can shift into a new identity. Well, one, of the, one of the things you can do to shift into that identity. Yeah. That's really a great suggestion too, by the way, because sometimes people, <clears throat> they'll look at just, for example, women, again, bringing them up, you know, they have this problem, you know, body image is, is a big thing. And so maybe they'll get somebody from Victoria's Secret and cut it out and put it on the refrigerator. I actually had a client that did that and she had, it, she didn't even know who these models were. And so it was difficult. So you're almost bringing something very interesting Kali, about um, the psychological thing too. It's like, is this person a role model as well as somebody that I can really relate to is, as it not just physically, but somebody that also may have some, you know, have integrity or, or has done something well for other people. So that's, that's really a great point. Yeah. So, yeah. What you said about um, <clears throat> cut out pictures of models and you know, stick them on their vision board. Because um, one of the things we we suggest with um, with our clients is when they when they're visualizing their ideal physical body, mm -hmm. visualize yourself mm -hmm. and your ideal physical body within yourself, rather than looking looking in magazines and going, "I want to look like that," yeah. because right. they're a different person. So it's hard That's for right. someone to identify with that person. You can model their traits and their actions and um, how they go through life, um, but you're yeah, getting people to visualize themselves in their ideal body. How does that feel? How does, how do you look, you know, when you look in the mirror and 
yeah, visualizing themselves is huge yeah. rather than somebody else. It, it makes it easier too for the for the subconscious to latch onto that and create a positive identity yeah. around it because it's real. It, it's it's real to them, you know. When they get those mm. those feelings and they can smell it and they can feel the wallpaper around them in their twelve week point in the future and they can truly understand it um, and relive that. Yeah. It, as we know, the subconscious just does as it's told. It doesn't. It doesn't know. It doesn't know reality from. It doesn't. Um, from <laughs> fiction. So you just keep hammering it with the same thought, the same image going through your head. It, that's exactly what's going to become your reality. That's that right. Yourself. Physically starts to change. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Well, then it brings me to a question here. In your professional opinion, what are some of the challenges that you encounter while trying to help people? There are many. <laughs> well, just name just name a couple, yeah. you know, that yeah. might be the most salient ones. We've, we've actually covered a few of them as well. With the, the, it is really the people's identity shift that's the okay. biggest one. That that is the that's that's the crux yeah. of the entire thing. It's um, I mean, Kelly touched on as well with yo-yo dieting, for example. It, that that is all solidly based on identity. So the, the major hurdles are basically the people's identities and believing in themselves. And once you can build that inner belief, build that identity with them, make them understand that, yes, they are completely capable of doing everything. And the old, I mean, the, the old way of doing it hasn't worked from before. And that, I mean, that comes back to change again, you know, your awareness, your understanding, removing yourself and reconditioning the issue. It's if once you get that hammered down and you get that locked down, the rest actually becomes really easy. But yeah, the, the main one, identity. And I think another one that we also encounter is accountability or personal accountability. <laughs> and you know, we, with your mind and body project in the course, yeah. we have the accountability oh, part yeah. of it. Because like Lee mentioned earlier, people justify why they're eating bad and why they're not exercising. And it all comes down to personal accountability. So I mean, what we do, we, we keep people accountable until they can keep themselves accountable. So that, that's a and huge always, one that we and always been with. always been there as well. Like you yeah. find with a lot of things these days, people remove their services or they remove themselves um, once the person's actually achieved the goal. Mm -hmm. And then that person, mm -hmm. because they haven't, they might have achieved the goal, but they haven't actually changed themselves. So they, right. they really start falling back into old habits. So yeah. it's important. And we do it with our clients. We stay there. We're there for them. Like we say, if you're in, you're in for life. We we always be there. We always make sure you know keep on top of the training, keep yourself, keep working because that's the thing you know. Human beings, we love comfort. We love being comfortable. Yeah. Oh, totally. So totally. Once you We're creatures goal, of habit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like once you hit that goal, that's now you're comfortable. So why would you stop at that? You keep pushing. Expand. Keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. Expand your reality. Expand that's your really reality. interesting. Yeah, that that really is, it. and I find that also in the work that I do, and I'll share really quick that um, I had a client, I was working with a, a therapist as well, and uh, she had many challenges and she had been uh, overweight her whole life and came from uh, a lot of um, belief systems that were very negative throughout her whole life. And uh, so anyway, um, we were working together for many weeks and I noticed that even the smallest goals, we use a lot of the, I don't know if you're familiar with SMART, the acronym, um, specific, measurable, you know, there's a lot of different acronyms, but you know, timely, relevant, you know, you have these small goals, small steps. And so she really liked the idea about starting small because she said that she had, um, worked with other um, behavioral coaches that would try to, oh, you just need to get out and go for a walk and try to push her and so forth. So to make a long story short, we came to the conclusion um, after so many weeks of not even being able to get out of her chair, of her recliner. There were times where she, she had a lot of clutter in her home, so she said, because this was usually we do sessions through Skype or telephone. So holding the space for her and listening to her. And then finally, it just, we had a very direct relationship. And I try not to work with anyone whom I cannot be that way with because, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat anything. Um, but we reached a point and I told this client, you know, you're not meeting any of your goals. 
you know, not even getting up at least for a half an hour to the kitchen or doing dishes, something like this. And so I said, may I give you an insight? And she said, sure, of course you can, Sandra. And I said, well, the insight is that you really just don't want to do anything and that you really are comfortable with where you're at and what you're doing and that you are influenced by your fiance and by what your parents said, you know, she's an older lady, but you know, she still had her whole family. And I said, and I, I just feel like you, <clears throat> you've mentioned several times in these weeks that you want to be left alone. And I said, you're actually doing that. Yeah. Every time we meet, you're actually doing that. You're doing exactly what you want. And I think you should continue until you're ready. And she started to cry and she said, that's exactly it. She says, I really just don't want to do anything. And, and I said, just so that I want you to be authentic where you are at, not what your fiance or the other people want you to be, whatever, you know. And so it's, it's a re really strange thing. You know, I'm sure people will be thinking, well, that's very strange. You should be able to get her out of her recliner and be able. But no, I wanted to meet her where she was at because she was deceiving herself. Yeah. And uh, so. And you can force your, you can force people to do anything. <laughs> exactly. You can force them to do something. It doesn't mean they're going to continue to do it. Yeah. It's, it's that, got to be authentic. That's yeah. That self-realization of like you pointed out, the self-realization of what they're doing is generally the most powerful aspect of, um, of, of any change in your life, whether it's, yeah. uh, whether it's a health change, whether it's a, a financial change, whether it's, a relationship change it doesn't matter where it sits in the in the Absolutely. in the realm it's it, the most powerful part of it is being understanding it and the problem is like if we if we talk about health most people wait until it's there's something wrong with them mm -hmm. before they yeah. before they take they action sure they, they wait yeah. till they've been diagnosed with something they wait until their, their health is failing and it's just like well now you're coming back from a point that's you, you you're trying to bring this this sort of vessel that you're running around and back to a point where it should have been all along. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be harder. Every yeah. day you leave it, it gets harder and harder. So taking action now is is yeah. massive, even if it is small. Small actions lead yeah. to large actions. So. Yeah, and if you come from a place of fear, like if you know you're diagnosed with something and then you start on your mm. health, you're you are coming from a place of fear rather than a place of self love. So if you start with self-love, then the results are so much different and you'll get quicker results. You'll have long lasting results as well. So I think that's a really interesting one for people to look at is, are you coming from a place of fear? Are you doing this out of fear of it's bikini season and I don't want to look bad in a bikini? Or are you doing because are you training and eating well? Because or how not about getting married? I've got to fit in that dress. And then after they get married, oh. it's, you know, it's going back to <laughs> exactly you know, our, one of my, it brings up um, this point is I teach people really a lot about self-care. It, um, it really is um, uh, of, of the self-care with, with yourself. You tie that into the self-love. A lot of people, and including myself, you know, many times didn't, well, what does that mean to love yourself? You know, we hear a lot of people talk about that and it's, it can be a very abstract concept. Yeah. And so again, here we go with the belief systems and what we've inherited from our parents or our family or, or society about what self-care is. And especially um, in, in countries or even including ourselves where um, perhaps religion has been a big part where it is a lot about selfless, right? Which is perfect and great to be altruistic and compassionate, but we need to to do that for ourselves. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's that old saying, isn't it? You know, you, you can't fill up someone else's cup if your cup's empty. Yeah. Amen. So how, how can you help other people if you're running around empty yourself? Or you're, you're, you're a flight, you're, you're a, a, a pilot. So I would always use the example about, you know, if the plane's going down, you have to put the oxygen first before you can give it to someone else because then you can't help them, you know, exactly. so. <laughs> yep, that's exactly and it. If you want to contribute to other people, if you're someone who's big on contribution, you still you have to start with yourself. It's like yeah. you know when you're a parent, you want to be a good parent. You still have to start with yourself, and because how you feel affects people around you. So 
starting with you is the best place to start mm. if you want to help other people as well. So absolutely. So well said, well said, with that, but yeah, start with yourself and then you can help other people. It will flow on if, and it will flow into other, all areas of your life yeah. as well. I agree. I agree. So one last question here is that, you know, we were talking earlier about, um, I don't know if it was during the recording or just prior to that. Um, there are people that, uh, that are will be watching this video clients of mine that and go onto the youtube channel and uh, they have illnesses and some disabilities um, any suggestions for them to stay healthy what what would be something you could think about you could give yeah. some inspiration it, to them action actions actions massive even even small action when you if you i mean i've been lucky enough to know people over the years i, I used to teach a gentleman to fly who actually had no legs which if anyone knows how to fly that's that's a massive task you need your legs um but he had worked out a contraption that he used and he's he's a licensed pilot he's actually a motivational speaker as well he's got a gentleman tony christensen he's he's an extremely powerful speaker um but i mean it, it just comes down to just doing it i mean it, it's the and i'll give a bit of hard love here it's the stop the pity party it's now time to make yourself the best version of yourself. And even if you, if I backed it off a wee bit, and when, you know, recently I've just come out of a major wrist reconstruction. So I was out of action for six months, really. Mm. I didn't sit around moping around. I went, well, this is an opportunity for me to work on uh, training my legs more. And, you know, it's about seeing the good and what you've got. And you, you only have to YouTube stuff these days to see people with, who have uh, some sort of adversity or some sort of disability and they're doing massive things that the people out there are watching us you're no different we're all the same we're all built with the same capability so it's a it's, it's a matter of really just doing it to be completely honest yeah and i think um also work on your belief system what do you choose to believe? Because what you believe becomes your reality. Yeah. And how you do that is by taking some action. Even if you're not sure what to do, take some action towards your health and wellness because that's going to build your belief and that's going to motivate you to take more action. And it kind of, it builds, it compounds over time yeah. by taking that little action, your belief system will grow and find someone to, again, keep you accountable, but help you with your belief. And, with belief it really is a choice what do you choose and you know the thing is one thing that we have is free will we can we can choose what we believe in and when you start to believe in yourself that you are capable of doing things it may not be exactly what other people are doing like lee said he worked on his legs when he couldn't um, work on his upper body but it's believing that you can do something there is alternatives to what other people do and just because it's not the same as what other people are doing for example with exercise doesn't mean that there isn't a perfect exercise for you to keep you fit yep. and nutrition i mean nutrition is it's pretty it's pretty simple it's pretty much the same for everybody with nutrition it's just keeping it healthy and um obviously the whole foods and balance, balance. Yeah. yeah balance but yeah belief, it, it, must start with belief right. choosing to believe in yourself and choosing what you believe and we embrace that here definitely and i like what you said about the opportunity um, a lot of people are not aware you know again here's that awareness that they can re that not just that they can but they sometimes must reinvent themselves you know they might not be able to do the marathons anymore because of some illness or disability or what have you but this is life right and um, even if you didn't have a disability or what have you as we age things change our body changes and so what are some things that we can do i always tell my um my clients you know let's not focus on what you used to do or what you wish you can do let's focus on what we have here and now and move forward so yes. um yeah, yeah it's exactly perfect because yeah. you can and i got stuck in it myself when i i was like i couldn't use my left arm and i'm sitting there going man i wish i could just do like this or i wish i could just train <laughs> it's, it's like, there's no point wishing i can't do it at the moment so i just need to put that aside and, yeah, yeah. absolutely focus on what you can do and what you can achieve and it'll become easy and you, you end up tuning in into a game as well 
like absolutely up, yeah i like that yeah yeah because then you get that whole oh, i've come up with a new way to do something there's a there's it, it feels like a slight amount of success so you get that dopamine rush in your head you get the old reward mechanism that goes you know slap on the back well done and that's it, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And and also, you know, again, we could go on and on in different little nuances of this, but it definitely is about that resiliency. And it also is, you know, I've also known a lot of people actually, especially as we get older, we have that mindset that can be pretty stubborn. People have had it pretty easy. You know, everything's been available to them. They haven't had to really work very hard for a lot of things and so when they do find themselves in obstacles or grief or something like this you know there there is they just don't know how they don't know how to work through that and exactly. so um but again oh my goodness i am so pleased that you agreed to do this interview right. and well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> absolutely it's been amazing <laughs> i hope i hope that uh, we can do this again Oh, we would love to. Yeah, we would absolutely anytime. love to. Yeah, <laughs> That's fantastic. You have a great one and hugs to the little one who's still sleeping. Still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Relief parents. <laughs> you guys take care and we will be talking soon and I'll let you know when this uh, recording as well uh, is on so that you can watch. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. Thank, thank you, you so much. Have a great one. No, thank you. you take do. care. Take care. Bye. Bye.